Hello and welcome to the Long Tail Build series. This is video number eight. Did any of you guys go to see NABS? I didn't go. I wanted to go and see it, but I couldn't make it out. Congrats to everyone in the show, and for those who went to see the show, welcome back. In the last video, we welded the main triangle. In this video, we're going to weld the dropouts onto the chainstays. Let's get started. We're starting off with 4130 steel tube with an outer diameter of 3 quarter inches. And uh, it's got a 0.035 thick wall. Uh, that's roughly one millimeter. I'll cut two lengths for each chainstay. I need to miter the bottom bracket shell end to the diameter of the bottom bracket shell. In order to do that, I need to measure the chainstay angle. After some changes I had made, I scrapped the first drawing and had this one printed out at a local printer. Uh, this print is straight out of BiCAD and is a one-to-one -one scale with the actual frame. Even after this was printed, I still made more changes. The chainstay length is now attached shorter to uh, allow for the custom dropouts I made. And the rear axle is no longer a 110mm BMX axle, it's now a more standard 135mm axle. And the seat stays are not uh, properly represented here. They actually extend past the seat tube and join at the top tube. I'm not working on the seat stays in this video, but uh, left it in there so you guys can see the full picture of how I updated the drawing. Finally, I've got my angle gauge out and measuring the chainstay angle. I'm measuring the angle of the chainstay against the frame's center line. It looks to be 5.1 degrees. Okay, time to cut this tube. I cut both chainstays while I had the angle set. Cutting the chainstay to its final length. and now slitting a notch for the dropout. My cutter is a tad shy of the dropout's thickness, so I'll, uh, I'll drop it down a bit to make it wider. Yeah. 
And as I always do, I check to see if the dropout fit in there, and it didn't. Uh, glad I checked. I measured wrong, so uh, one more cut just a tad lower, and that did the trick. Now to check it against the main triangle while in the jig, and uh, that notch will need to go slightly deeper. Always better to remove material uh, bit by bit than to take off too much. I did that on the last frame. Some builders with more experience uh, will pre-drill all the purge holes, but I didn't trust myself enough. I'm too afraid I'll need to change something uh, later on, so I wait until kind of the last moment to drill these holes. Okay, holes are now drilled, and now I'll cut angles on either end of the slot. I'm using a 3 quarter inch Paragon Machine Works block to index my cuts. I'm using a new saw blade and being very patient with the cut. I got the tubes cleaned up and I'm getting them back on the jig for tacks. All tacked up and ready for caps. I handmade these caps off camera. Um, the vented caps will go on the sides facing the wheel and the non-vented side will face out. The last time I welded caps it was a pain to hold it in place. So this time around I fashioned myself this tool and this will hold the caps in place for tack welding. Okay, caps are tacked and now it's just a matter of welding them on. I've got everything set up for purge and we are ready to go.
Alright, the first weld is going on the bottom right here. Got kind of a slow start. And uh, it's hard to tell how much heat to put in the first time you weld one of these things because you're dealing with uh, the tube is one millimeter wall and the uh, the cap is uh, I forget but it's a little thinner than the thickness of a dropout so I stacked those too closely was moving too slow and um, the end will got a little too hot so this time around I'm uh, got a little better see I'm moving a little bit further with each pulse still a little bit too slow all right now I'm on the top side And uh, I got stuck there. Okay, so um, this is not the weld I ended up with. Uh, I actually had a pretty bad weld here. Uh, it came out all lumpy and it um, I don't think I got enough penetration with it and so what I did was this is our little secret here I actually ran another weld on top of it with no filler I just kind of pulsed and uh, ran the torch down the ugly uh, low penetration weld and that's how I got ended up with this all right now I'm welding the other side and I'm using 045 filler wire. Uh, that last weld was 035. And uh, I switched to 045 because the puddle was running kind of hot. So um, thicker wire will cool the puddle each time you, uh, you dip it. All right, now I'm welding where the cap meets the dropout. And uh, you can see I started out um, my intention was to pulse and then dip the wire, but it got stuck in the puddle. And so I just left it there and continued on with the lay wire. And then things got really ugly at the end there. Okay, so <laughs> uh, what happened here is the, the air was creating a swirl. I didn't know at first. I realized this later on. Uh, let me show you guys what's going on here. All right, so there's our dropout, and here's our uh, torch. And so when you get toward the end, you get this swirl of turbulence. And uh, that's because there's like air under, there's like space underneath there. And that created my little burnout. And so what I, what you need to do is, you well, what I do is I stick a, um, a cloth underneath it, um, like an oven, a heat-resistant oven mitt, and that prevents the swirling and uh, makes things a lot a lot nicer so I hadn't figured that out yet I still didn't know why I ended up turning down the uh, the argon and you could see I was still sparking out and uh, eventually I kind of got it good enough without really sparking um, and that's what I ended up with okay on to the other side and you can see I started off with the spark because I hadn't figured out why that was happening yet. And um, also, I've just resi resigned myself to lay wire. And uh, I didn't actually resign myself. I actually des I decided it was the right choice for this case. And here we are. Not too bad. All right, now for the tricky part, I'm, um, I had some pretty big dreams here. You can see I'm practicing going all the way around the tube. I was going to try and get this cap with one pass. 
and uh, reality is much different. So let's start this off. Go. And here I am. I'm pulse dipping. There we go. Ah, oh, got stuck. And I'm coming around. And not quite turning that angle. But that's actually uh, not why I stopped. So I stopped because um, the filler wire was wrongly positioned. And getting that into position, it just didn't feel right, and I had to stop. So I did this in two passes, uh, two stages. Well, what was that? I don't know what happened there. I think I got the torch stuck. All right, so there's that. Uh, not too bad. Got a little hot on the end, I think. And I sped it up so that you guys uh, don't have to sit through the, the standard length videos. And there's the other side. Actually, that's the one I think I ran a, a bit hot on. So that's that first dropout. All welded up. And there's dropout number two. So I welded this one off camera because um, I didn't want to make you guys sit through the same thing again. Uh, but this one went a lot smoother. And that wraps things up for this video. I'll have a link to the 3 quarter inch tube blocks you saw in this video that will be in the description. Also, some of you guys sent me messages about my P3D site not showing schematics anymore. Thanks for letting me know and I'm happy to tell you guys that it uh, magically fixed itself. Uh, for you guys who don't know, I'll have a link in the description as well for this. In the next video, we're on to the seat stays. Those are going to be tricky and a first of that type. I don't know what you call it, but um, they intersect with the seat tube and connect at the top tube. Anyway, that should be interesting. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.